Good afternoon. Um, so today I'm going to look at um, a slightly different uh, commission that Repton was given, um, in that it um, was one of his few institutional designs. And this was for the um, East India Company, based, of course, in the city of Leadenhall Street, um, for its newly established, uh, in 1805, um, seminary or college, um, which was designed to train um, young men, a two-year course, um, to become writers or civil service uh, m members, um, both in, in India, the China Station, uh, and elsewhere in the company possessions. Um, it's, it's really been quite a, a, f a fascinating uh, journey um, exploring Repton's commission at Haleybury. Um, it starts rather inauspiciously um, in um, 19, uh, the 1960s when John Morden Crook um, writes on the East India College's buildings um, at Haleybury. Um, which is by William Wilkins, and he mentions, it's the first time it's ever mentioned, I think, in print, that Repton was involved in the landscaping. And then we jump a few more years to uh, 1978, and we get a tiny little article by Ray Desmond in Garden History um, about the college, and which is quite dismissive. At the time, he's working um, at, with, with the India Records, um, and... Um, he really says that it's an unimportant com commission, um, a back of a, of, a, of a early 19th century fag packet, as it were. Um, research over the last few years has revealed something, something slightly different. Um, and that is that although we do not have the book of plans, uh, which was paid for in 1809, what we do have is an amazing paper trail of um, the commission between Repton, uh, um, the gardener he employs, Thomas Barr, more and on, um, Samuel Pepys Cockerell, who's already been mentioned, who is the um, company's surveyor, uh, and also the directors themselves. So it's a very unusual um, Repton landscape in, in that we've actually got a lot of paperwork that we can refer to. I chose to call it the, uh, the shaking the pagoda tree because um, Repton did rather well out of um, this, this commission. Um, he was not only employed by the company um, to do the designs, but he was also employed to oversee the project um, as well. Uh, so. The original site was purchased in 1805 by the East India Company, um, and they purchased Haley Bushes, or newly renamed um, Haleybury, um, from a um, surgeon in the East India Company's service, William Walker. It is a small estate of 60 acres. Uh -huh. And... Um, <clears throat> In order to create a coherent site, um, the company um, and its, um, the surveyors that it employs um, have to organize land exchanges so they're able to create a more coherent um, site. This is um, an image of the almost complete East India College by Thomas Medland, um, the artist, of course, who's um, probably best known um, as the uh, engraver of Repton's trade card. Um, and we can see um, both William Wilkins' um, building, um, this very uh, imposing um, four-sided uh, institutional structure, and we can see Medlin's um, vision for part of um, Repton's landscaping. Um, the um, building, as I say, was commissioned by, um, was built by, um, or designed by William Wilkins. Um, and by 1807, the surveyor of uh, 
the East India Company, Samuel Peaks Cockrell, is looking at how the um, project is going to be tied up. And he um, raises the issue that nobody has considered an appropriate landscaping um, design to give the buildings um, the grandeur and the authority that they deserve. Um, he writes this to the directors. The directors take this on quite quickly, and it is given to a um, subcommittee of the Court of Directors known as the Committee of College. Um, and the Committee of College um, resolves that the chairman of the East India Company uh, and also chairman of the uh, Committee of College, um, Edward Parry, will approach Humphrey Repton to... Um, be employed for the design. Um, Repton approaches, um, Parry approaches Repton, and Repton um, is uh, keen to take on the commission. Um, the project with Repton begins in November 1808, um, in which on one day he walks the estate with Edward Parry and discusses um, what the um, committee of college uh, would like to achieve. And on the following day, um, we discover that um, Repton repeats the exercise with Samuel Pepys Cockrell, the surveyor, and also the principal of the East India College, um, the Reverend Samuel Henley, um, who is a fascinating character in his own right. Um, involved with um, educational ideas, um, with Thomas Jefferson, um, was a professor um, at the College of William and Mary, involved in the discussion of the picturesque, um, and, uh, and also uh, in his early days, a, a dissenting um, preacher, uh, and perhaps best known as the man that pu published um, Vathic, Beckford's um, great oriental um, book without permission and is thrown out from the Beckford circle and only reinvents himself in 1805 when he's been appointed to this post. A fascinating character, um, but a shadowy one. So Repton um, is given an unusual task. He has already been given an educational institutional landscape to plan for, um, just one that we know of, and that is at Magdalen College. Um, the plans being uh, put together in 1800 um, and, and the Red Book finished off um, with a flourish on the um, 1st of January 1801. Um, however, that rather large imposing Red Book that he produces for the um, fellow, fellows of Maudlin um, is not taken up. His ideas are too large too expensive uh, and really not very Oxford. Um, he's wanting to uh, more or less uh, recreate half the college. And so it remains a paper exercise. Halebury, however, it is one that he did um, produce. Um, as I say, commissioned in um, November 1808, and his connection with the East India Company um, as an employer continues until January 1811, when all of the accounts are, um, are settled, um, finally. For this project, um, Repton is working with people that he knows already. He is working with Samuel Peaks Cockrell, who he's worked with at um, Sesencut. He is working with Thomas Barr, the um, contracting gardener um, who's based at Bull's Pond. And um, he's also working with people who he's come across through other East India directors or shareholders, families. Um, why is Repton required to create an educational landscape? at Haleybury. Well, this is um, all set in the, um, the last um, 30 years of the 18th century. The East India Company, um, by, the 18, uh, by the 1770s, 1780s, is seen as a corrupt and um, damaged and actually un-English and un-British institution in that it is 
corrupt and interested in monetary wealth rather than actually representing um, the sovereign aims of um, Britain. And uh, this, is, this is quite an interesting um, image, mainly because it's, it's quite late, 1816. This is from uh, The Adventures of Kwai Hai, um, a, a very cyrical um, series of um, cantos written about the corruption of the East India Company in 1816. And we still see then this British attitude, um, which Crookshank here encapsulates that the company is flawed. Look at the physical deformities of the individuals. We've got people who look like satyrs. We've got Janus-faced individuals. We've got lupine, supine, whatever. Every, every sort of uh, physiological failing that you could imagine in this one. This is the popular view of the East India Company at the end of the 18th, a beginning of the 19th century. And the company has to do something about this particularly after uh, Pitt's attempts to reform the rule of India in 1784, which ultimately fail, but do create um, the Board of Control for India, which means the government finally gets some control of India. In 1804, 1805, the company finally decide that they must actually create um, uh, an institution where young men can be trained to provide an education for um, <clears throat> civil servants, where they can learn to be good administrators, good citizens, good individuals. It's split into two parts. There's the European department and there's the Oriental department. Oriental department, is, both departments are um, extremely modern in their approaches. But one is seen as helping to rule and war, um, directly the Indians, whether it's Mohammedans, whether it's um, Hindus, or whether it's Sikhs. Um, and the other one, the European department, is seen to provide them with a good English, and this is quite important even though it's filled with Scots, English moral education to prevent the infection of the Asiatic temperament. And so what does the company do? It decides that it wants to move away from people like Paul Benfield, one of the great corrupt nabobs or nabobs of the 18th century, and instead it wants to go somewhere clean and start afresh. This is the, um, this is the original site. This is the Four Gables of um, Haley, or Haley Bushes. Um, from an 1857 photograph by Molly and Molly Williams. And they start afresh. They're out of London. They're creating essentially Britain's first campus university, closer in design to what the Americans are creating with um, Harvard, the College of William and Mary, and um, just slightly after Haleybury, Jefferson's own pr project, um, the um, University of Virginia. Cockrell is the orchestrator. Repton has to work through Cockrell in order to do this. Um, he's already been um, associated with Cockrell um, through Charles Cockrell, um, Simon Peake's brother. Um, so Charles Cockrell, of course, is the or was the uh, patron and creator of um, Sazencott, and Repton, we know, was involved in what Arthur um, McGregor has recently called, essentially, a committee of taste made up of S.P. Cockrell, Charles Cockrell, um, Daniel, uh, 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 and Repton. But that, of course, was for an individual, and it was for, essentially, a Hindu vision. It was bringing India to this country. That is not what we wanted um, at Halebury. Halebury is designed as a piece of architecture in the Greek revival taste, and Repton is employed to produce a parkland that is appropriate. Now, I said before that they purchased the estate, and it was approximately 60 acres. This shows most of the estate that um, Repton produces. It's a very small, very tight space. 
Repton designs the landscape for what is the south front area and also the western approach to the college. He oversees Thomas Barr's construction of a very interesting area, which is a large sports or exercise ground as well, which provides here racket courts. In fact, it might be the earliest um, purpose-built racket court in the world. Um, cricket grounds. He also lays out sites for professorial gardens. Haleybury has professors, not teachers, and in this, the uh, northeastern corner and the north um, <clears throat> western corner. Um, and here at the center, we've got um, accommodation for the professors. These professors are allowed to be married, unlike most of the Oxford um, fellows. And so he brings in accommodation. Repton lays out um, spaces for these, but isn't involved in planting the professorial gardens, much to the upset of the professors themselves. And so it is, it's a very strange type site, which is about no more than 30 acres that he's involved in. Um, his original plan is carried out in full apart from one element, which is creating a large water. Now, because the Book of Plans hasn't survived, we don't know where that large water, that initial water, was planned for. But I have a suspicion from the way he describes it in um, letters to the company that it probably actually went across from um, west to um, east and made use of this large dip um, that existed um, until the 1860s um, and wanted to put a water in here. That was the only element that the um, court of the East India Company turned down because of the potential expense. They were happy to put in an extremely elegant and formal um, double carriageway with um, two um, double rows of um, horse chestnuts. And this was a really clever device uh, by Repton, because what it allowed him to do was to hide some of the less elegant elements of this huge um, Western front, and instead pay attention to the entrance, and more uh, precisely, the propylia, the symbolic um, uh, and almost religious um, entry, processional entry, into um, the quadrangle. Um, it, the, the use of the horse chestnuts masks off the unsightly or less elegant um, white, wear white bricks which were used. Thank you. So he takes ideas, and we can see there the, the light carriage drive that he does create, for the East India Company's formal entrance, but he also provides us with the um, southern front. And here he gives us a completely different um, response. We have the academic approach, which is designed for a formal entrance into the college. And here he gives us essentially that parkland um, great lawn um, that gives the effect that actually we have here a palace or a temple for learning. Um, towards the end of the project um, in um, <clears throat> 1810, he comes up with a smaller water idea, which are two um, pools which form a serpentine shape um, and give a smart water effect, which can be seen from the turnpike road. Um, which we can see here, um, but this is now heavily, uh, heavily wooded from the uh, 1830s. Um, and he also gives us, which has hitherto been thought to be actually um, Wilkins's device, this huge and imposing um, 432 foot um, grand terrace which provides the students with views out across Hertfordshire towards Brickenden. 
we are now in the position that we understand the basics of the commission. Um, and that's, that's been a fascinating uh, process which um, we've now been able to write on uh, and speak on. The next question about um, this landscape is starting to look at it actually about what Repton, what the East India Company, and what Wilkins and Cockrell are trying to do to create um, a new discourse about learning, about moral behavior, and about actually um, what the East India Company at um, the, po uh, the point of its last sort of hurrah, eight, between 1808 and 1811, what it is trying to actually present itself to the British people as. And I think that in this Medellin, we can see it. We can see that the company wants to present itself as a authoritative uh, 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 and um, supportive um, institution where young men come to be given space to grow and learn so they can become good citizens of this country and excellent administrators of India. Thank you.